Hi, I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting. And once again, I've given in to peer pressure. You guys kept asking and asking. Please do it, Elsa. Please do Frozen. Just couldn't come up with a good idea. So finally, I think I did. And I'm happy with the way she turned out. I wanted her to look like she was just really blowing in the wind, conjuring up a storm. You know how Elsa does. You know that, Elsa. Anyway, lots to show you here. Let's just get started. We're starting out this project with a, just an uh, eight inch round and a five inch round or a four would work too. And you see that I've got it on here offset all the way flush with this side and over to the side. And what I wanna do is I wanna place my Elsa doll right here, right down in here on this side so we're gonna use the traditional method. We're just gonna cut a hole and put her down in, but I don't wanna waste your time showing you that because there's so much more fun stuff to show. So cut your hole, put it right down in, and we'll be right back. So if I didn't mention before, these uh, layers are split and filled. So they're just single layers, not double layers. So you can tort them, fill them with whatever you want. If this is the first time you've seen me do a doll cake, um, I just wanna go over a couple things. Yes, you can wrap her in saran wrap, if you wish. She's gonna need to go in the dishwasher after anyway, or washed with soap. She is a fresh, sterile doll out of the box, so that part's up to you. No, I don't like to use the hole cutter to put her down in, because then it might be too wide, and then I have to fill in with icing, and I want her to be really stable. See, if I move her, the whole cake moves. So, those are a couple basic things, so you don't have to ask me about it later. So you can see that I just got her in right at crotch level. That's perfect. That gives me space to create this part out of the icing, and so she's not so full up here. Also, with this doll cake, we're actually going to make a mock front of her dress, as though her feet were gonna be sticking out the bottom, and the rest of her dress is gonna be flowing out the back. So that's why I have her offset. A little different for this one, but I think it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna sculpt this just a little down the front. You can see I've marked here with my knife up the front of my cake where I want her skirt to be. So I've sculpted this out down the front here, as you can see, just a little bit here and a little bit here so that I can get my skirt effect. So I've got my area sculpted out here and then lightly crumb iced. I'm gonna come back in with a large, uh, figure piping tip here. Now you can just use the end of the coupler. The idea here is just to cover evenly. And I wanna start right here at her waist and just outline. We wanna keep the outline of her little bodice. And by the way, I've decided to keep her sparkly bodice and not add to it uh, because it's pretty as it is. And we don't wanna do more than we have to. So I'm just gonna fill in here. Now keep in mind that you wanna use a sky blue for this because it already has a little bit of the teal color to it and thin down, it'll be just about right. So we're just gonna come in and fill down the skirt. I wanna come back in now and use Leah's smoothing technique. This is just a piece of uh, the top of a Ziploc bag. I'm just gonna smooth. It's actually just the fastest way. You don't have a Ziploc go ahead and use a spatula. But this will just give me a nice, smooth, even skirt area. Coming back in now with the top of my Ziploc bag again, and I'm just gonna create some curves here just to create the sense that the skirt is flowing around her legs and back just a little bit because we want the whole thing to look as though it's windswept. When I finish my edge, I've added just a little bit of icing there and I'm gonna use my Ziploc to finish it off and make sure that it's sticking out over the edge here because I wanna add shoes under there to make it look like her feet are sticking out. I made two little dots of candy melt, just a little teardrop shape for her shoes. And Elsa always stands with her feet apart, so I'm just gonna tuck them under, just a hint of a shoe. Next, I wanna add just some five petal flowers, just dot flowers, so one dot and five dots around it. It kinda look like a snowflake design up the front of the skirt. So, I've started putting half marshmallows on, and these are gonna be supports 
for my ruffles that are blowing in the wind. These are gonna give us the 3D effect that we want. You just wanna position them around so that they're gonna give us that uplifted edge. I want everything to kind of be blowing this way, blowing outward. So I started adding the ruffles for the lower tiers, which have a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. So these first front ones, I want to have a little bit more of the white and I've color striped my bag. So I want it to be all be blowing this direction. So we're going to have some pieces that are blowing that way. So I've turned my bag over and now I'm going to have more blue. By the way, this is a number 1D rose tip. You also could use your quick icing tip. And we just want to make long ruffles coming down. So I started putting my ruffles on this side too. And I've turned my bag over so that it matches. So I've got a blue under and a white top. And while I still got that coming out of this bag, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, have it sweep to the side here. So I've got my first one down below that's gonna be flipping up. So I wanna just come back and up, let my tip drape up, flip up, come all the way up under. So I'm using a star tip, and I'm gonna put just a rosette, a swirl here on the end of each of my marshmallows so it not only covers the end but it also gives it that snowy feel so when you get just a peek underneath the ruffles you see the swirl it's also going to give my ruffles just a little bit more of the lift that I want and I've also filled in the ruffles that are not swooping upward so we're moving around to the back and continuing just to put a nice lift on the edge of the ruffle and then come back in with just our little bit of our plastic baggie and just lift the ends, edges just a little to give it that wind blown effect. So we're now here at the top and I want to attach this ruffle here and let it drape down. So this is the first part of her overskirt. I want to let that come down onto the marshmallow and flip up. Keep bringing it around. We're long, even pressure. And you want to continue this. Now this needs to sweep to the side because we're doing our windblown look. Come all the way around. So I flipped my bag over and I've changed direction so that these ruffles are aiming this way. Now we've got to navigate this corner and blend them back in the ones that are going the other way. And there we have it. Now the last bit is we need to cover her bum here and give her a treatment that blends up into her waist. I cut the tip of the bag bigger and we're just going to use a figure piping tip Figure piping technique here, squeeze, pull it down to the center, and squeeze, pull it down to the center. I'm going to use my bag here again just to smooth slightly. Don't need to work it too much, just blend it in. So I just got a leaf tip here, and I'm just going to make a ruffle down the side of the leaf tip. I wanted to kind of blend that edge. I wasn't so happy with the way that ended, but I think that looks really pretty. So I made a few of these swirls that I want to add on here. They're just candy melt swirls, just done with a number four rudder, that I want to just add in randomly here to the edges of her ruffles, just to add to that motion feeling and the feeling of swirling snow. Just adding the last few swirls down here at the base of her skirt to kind of add to that flow feeling. So 
So we did it. We made our Elsa cake, conjuring up a storm. I think she turned out really pretty and really whimsical. I think every little Elsa fan would be thrilled with her. So you guys know that you can find me now on Curious. Dot com, where there's a whole 10 lesson beginning cake decorating course for those of you who need or want that. You can find me at The Art of Frosting where so many of you are sharing your amazing work with me. I appreciate it so much. You can find me at my blog at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com where you can see all kinds of my work, Leah's work, and some of our friends from around the world. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys all again really soon. Bye.